In today's video, we're going to be showing you digging a well, a water well, and installing a hand pump. Whether you're on a off-grid or on-grid, just in case you have no power at all, you need a good water source. So we're installing this water source here for long term, and we're going to take you onto uncharted ground here. This has not been dug before. There is another well. It's an old well. And it's got like two inch piping so they're going to be putting in bigger piping into this homestead here and so it's going to be walking you through this video is going to be walking you through the process of how to dig a well so let's get started so this is the drilling rig it's early in the morning so it's the trees has got the uh, shadows going on This is the back side of the rig. And that's going to go way up into the sky. And the well is going to go about right there. So this is my greenhouse. It's a low side wall, roll up sides, greenhouse, tunnel. And I'm almost at completion, so watch that video, how to build a low side wall greenhouse. Inside is my beds, which will be painted. Two doors at the end, and hardware wire on the sides down here. And let me show you the distance from where the pump's going to be. So there's the rig in the greenhouse. Guys, so they're fixing to get started here onto the homestead of jigging this well here and putting on a side pump, a hand pump. So I'm going to ask some questions here. This is uh, sage drilling and pump service in Hampstead, North Carolina. If you know anything about the East Coast, we have a lot of hurricanes, so water is life here. This is Mike from Sage Drilling and Pump Service. I'm going to ask him a couple questions. If you have any questions or comments, please leave the questions and comments below. And we'll get back with you just as soon as possible. So when we look at this well, how deep are we drilling today? Today our final depth will be about 100 feet on this particular well and we are installing a 4 inch diameter PVC casing and it will be a screened well because of the formation in which we're targeting which is the PD aquifer it is a sandy based rock so we will have 10 slot screens at the bottom of the well with a gravel pack filter. So it was involved in setting up a well for long term, if we're looking for long term. Well, there's many different ways to drill a well, install a well. I work with homeowners all the time who have installed their own wells, or I've installed wells by hand, shallow wells. Um, you see a lot of people um, see things you can buy at Lowe's and things like that, well points that are driven. Um, just galvanized screens that are driven into the ground 10 or 15 feet. Depending on what your material is and the water level, those can work, but normally will not work for a high volume and usually will not last something that's going to be dependable for multiple, you know, years and years and years down the road. So the deeper you can go in getting into a consolidated formation, an aquifer that is not going to dry up or even if you're not into a consolidated rock formation, a what's called surficial aquifer is a sand, water-bearing sand material. As long as you're in a good material and the well is built properly, usually meaning gravel packed around your screens to keep the fine sand from clogging up your well point, that is the number one thing in the construction that's going to keep the well lasting as long as possible. That's good information. So what happens after you hit water? What do you do? Once you hit that water, what happens? Well, when you're drilling, it takes many years. And, you know, my father and his father before him did this. So experience is everything when it comes to constructing a, a water well that's going to work properly. Um, you don't just hit it and water starts gushing out of the ground. We're doing what's called a mud rotary drilling process here. You have air rotary is more in the mountain regions. We're in the coastal region of North Carolina here. So we do mud rotary drilling. Um, so we have to look at our formation and from experience, we have to know what formations will yield water. Um, air rotary in the mountains and, and 
out west, when they're drilling, you'll see dust flying out of the ground around the borehole behind the rig. And usually once they get into us where there is water, you'll see mud and wet water actually flying out of the hole. This here you'll see while we're drilling, um, it's all wet, it's all mud the whole time because we're using water and fluids to actually drill our borehole. So we have to know the material that bears water and build the well accordingly depending on how much volume the customer is looking for. Uh, that has to, then we decide how big the well needs to be, how big the borehole needs to be, and then the length of the screen or the borehole in which the water is yielding from. So the more hole you take in the formation, the more depth of screen you have, that's going to make more water. In some places, you're limited on the amount of formation in the ground. So it really comes down to experience and having to read the geology on, in which you're drilling. Wow, wow, that's very informational. Uh, so what type of machine is this? This is a mobile drill. It's a B40. Uh, this is actually a 1978 drill rig is when it was produced. And this is a top head rig, hydraulic top head. So we can spin augers for environmental and geotechnical work with this. We can core drill with this rig. And what we're set up to do today is a mud rotary procedure. We'll be running a tricone roller bit, which we'll show you here in a little bit. And that will cut our limestone formation fine, our sand formation fine. Wow. We don't have a lot of heavy clays here, so we'll, we'll be okay with that. So hammer in the rock, when people hear the word hammer in the rock, is this the common method? Hammering, so where there's harder formations, granite, things like that. So here in North Carolina, as you get into the, the Appalachian range and up further into the state, you'll have air rotary, which has a hammer bit on it. And it will pound and break up the rock as it spins. And then the air blows the cuttings up and out of the hole. Um, this, we are drilling through the rock. At some times, the rig will look like it's bouncing and it will look like it's hammering. It's just bouncing as the bit rotates on the rock. So we're cutting the rock. Now in hammer drill, air rotary drilling is another process that is used depending on the geological construction. So when we hear the words casing or the casing's done, y'all hear the train going through, it's an old timey train. Uh, when we hear the words casing done, what does that mean? The casing is the part of the well that holds back sorry the train holds back all the soils clay anything that you do not want to get into where your water is being produced from so the casing blocks off all the unnecessary soils and clays going down into where the water comes from it's the solid part of the well okay so what happens when you get to that bedrock so here we'll have two layers of rock and at this particular spot they the aquifers actually touch each other you have first we're going to hit limestone rock which we'll drill into and we're going through the limestone because the limestone here has a lot of rust in it a high iron content yeah and we're going to drill through that and then we're going to pressure grout casing in to the top of the second aquifer then we will drill and insert screens out of the bottom of the casing. So we're going to block off the first rock layer and we'll be drilling into a second. And right here, they're very close and they're actually pretty shallow. We'll hit rock here probably at 20 feet in her yard. Uh, I actually live within a mile from here and I hit it at 15 feet, the surface of it, um, of the Castle Hain Aquifer here. And it's a very large aquifer here in Eastern North Carolina and it yields high volumes but it does have a lot of iron content. Mm -hmm. So we're going to yeah. go through that and into the PD aquifer, which is a sandstone based formation, um, which recharges from the PD river here in North Carolina and the Castle Hain aquifer has its name because it recharges from the Cape, F Cape Fear river, which is here in Castle Hain where we're located. So we're located in Castle Hain, North Carolina. We're here on the, in North Carolina onto the East coast. So if we're talking about the drill, what kind of drill? Is there more than one when you're drilling? Do you have to switch drills, drill bits? Yes, ma'am. Yes, there are. We, we're going to start with a five and seven eighths diameter drill bit. That's large enough to give us enough space to get four inch diameter casing in the ground. If we hit a 
void or a cavern while we're drilling, which happens a lot here in the eastern region, the coastal region. Um, we will have to let it collapse. We'll pull out and we will drill a larger hole, a eight inch diameter hole to set six inch casing up top. So depending on what we encounter drilling will determine how many times or different size bits or different size casings we'll have to install. But the end product will be a four inch diameter casing. This is so informative. So what does it mean where the drill drops in the ground? Just like drops. So depending on where you're drilling, there's you know, different scenarios here, like I was just saying, in this region on the coast, we have a lot of voids or caverns in the limestone rock, and sometimes the drill will not drop at all. We'll stay on hard drilling material, but we will lose all of our fluid that we are recirculating, because mud rotary drilling, which we're doing today, and you'll see, it recirculates. We pump our fluid out of a mud pan and back down the drill rods, and that flushes up all of our cuttings into our mud trough okay so if we hit a void it doesn't necessarily drop but our water will take off it can just be a little crack in, a, in the rock okay other times we'll hit it and it'll drop four or five feet and then you go maybe another foot and you'll drop another few feet so sometimes there can be larger pockets and voids where the rock did not form other times it doesn't necessarily drop but it still causes the same amount of problems because we lose our recirculation of our fluid, which mud rotary drilling in which this is, that is what we, the number one thing that we have to have uh, the whole time is, is our circulation of our drilling fluids. So y'all, as you see, having experience is a must. So if you're considering just going out there, digging you a little, you know, in the ground and having your well, it might not work. You might want to give this guy a call. So one last question, how long does it take to set up this in, to completion? How long? Well, you know, yesterday we mobilized equipment on site, you know, so everything from fueling up, checking your oils and fluids on all your equipment, getting to site, that's one thing. Now we're going to start the setup process and start to finish with, uh, with a crew of guys that have been around with you and doing it in the past experience should take about an hour to get everything ready to drill you know from air compressors airlines pumps service truck we have water on site so there's a lot of moving pieces we'll actually have between the trucks and the rig we've got five engines that you know will operate throughout the day that have to be checked maintained operatable so there's a lot of moving parts into drilling just a little hole in the ground and a lot of people don't see this part of things absolutely well, guys, he's going to get started. If you have any comments, please comment below, share, and hit the thumbs up on this video, and hit that like button so this video, this video and videos will get out there into the YouTube arena, and we're going to take you along on this journey, and I believe at the very end of this video, you'll be amazed at what it takes to drill a well. And also, don't forget, this is not just a drilling a, a, a well and putting a, a tank on a pump, electrical pump on there. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. And then where he's putting also a hand pump. So off grid, on grid, no power, it's on. Yep, we're gonna have a submersible pump, one horsepower, 25 gallon per minute, Franklin Electric pump. And we're going to also rig up a Simmons pitcher pump on top where she will have the option to isolate if the power is off and be able to hopefully pull water with the hand pump. And granted, hand pumps will only work with the water level shallower than 25 feet. So it all depends on where you are, what your water level is in the ground, it has to do with a hand pump, um, just like a shallow well jet pump. So three main pumps on the market. You can look into that information depending on what you're trying to do with your volume output and where it is that you're constructing your well and water levels. There's a whole lot of information when it comes to that, and that's why talking to a professional, a Absolutely. pump installer, and well installer, they're going to guide you in the direction you need. And the key word here is professional. Don't get no jack lag. Get a professional. So I would suggest you call Sage Drill and Pump Service. I'm really impressed with him. I'm not a person who's very impressed. If you watch some of my videos, I've hired and I've fired. But that's just the way it is because I'm not, I'm a very experienced woman myself. I know some things and that's the way we're supposed to do. So guys, we're getting ready to get this done. All right. Thank thanks. you so much.
here this is a seven and seven eight inch tricone roller bit so designed for softer rock like I explained in the beginning um, air rotary with hammer button bits are used more in the northern part of the state here in North Carolina so we are going with this size we are going to set six inch diameter casing first which is some laying on the ground back here because I made that decision to go ahead and usually we hit caverns here about 90% of the time. So we're gonna prepare for it from the beginning versus hitting one and having to backtrack out and then upsize. We're gonna play it safe and go ahead and start by setting what's called a pit casing, which is just until we get into the surface of the first rock to hold open the sand from collapsing if we hit a cavern further down while we're drilling. We'll actually remove this casing after the four inch well or whatever size well you're installing. After the well is installed, you can remove this outer section of pit casing if it does not get too locked in with sand and other materials. Other times we'll leave it and just grout it in place. This is the most important part about what we do with mud rotary drilling is the actual drilling mud, which is a high yield bentonite. This is a viscosity builder. It's gonna create a wall on your hole. It's also lifts the cuttings. Just drilling with fresh water, you'll lose your water in the ground. It will absorb it. So this thickens up the viscosity, does not let your water escape as much. It also will build a, a kind of a wall on the hole to help it hold it open and it carries the cuttings out. So this is what, this mixture you'll see has changed throughout the whole drilling process in clay and, and thick mud like that naturally in the ground. We will have to thin down because it will naturally get thick. And if we're in a lot of coarse sand, it will thin down naturally and we'll have to add mud. Or the deeper you get, the larger rock cuttings, things like that, the heavier they are, the more mud you'll need to lift it up and out and into our sediment pan where then we can shovel it onto the ground. So all of our cuttings from the borehole will settle in this what's called a mud pan and that's what you'll see us doing a lot of here.
because for the sake of this video, I believe that they're working on the head casing. Um, a while ago, I had it on fast motion, so I'm not sure if it got that part. He was talking about the uh, route, the sand part, and he can explain it better than I can. That's why you need a professional. But they get that at 20 feet, and in some places they used to get it at 100 feet, but they are well on their way. Guys, what they're doing is they're sealing in that casing. diameter bit and stabilizer. Again, tricone roller bit. Now this is what we'll be drilling inside and out of the bottom of the six inch casing with until we reach the top of our formation in which we're going to have our well constructed. We'll be setting four inch casing down and grouting it in through this limestone into the top of the sandstone formation which is the PD aquifer. That way we block off all the high iron content that's in that Castlehane aquifer from coming down and leaching down and into where we're going to be pulling our water from. So I'll show you that process once we are setting and grouting the casing into place after we drill this limestone rock.
This is limestone cuttings. You can make out a lot better than before because it was so soft and nasty. This is a lot harder. You can see it's breaking off in thinner sheets. Bigger pieces, but thinner sheets. You know, it's, it's harder limestone, but it's easier to make out what it is now that we've actually gotten into it further and we're getting more cuttings out. How hard do you think it will be to go now? This this layer of this layer of limestone in this area is pretty shallow. It's usually only about 30 foot thick. So we hit it, you know, 16, 17 feet. It got hard at about 25. So this is 36. So we just cut 10 foot out of the bottom of the six inch of virgin rock. And like I said, we'll probably come out of it at about 50, 55 feet here, somewhere in that range possibly. You know, just a few miles, you know, north of in Hampstead, North Carolina, up the road where I'm from, this layer of rock is 100 foot thick. So we'll hit it at 80 foot and won't come out of it until 180 or 200 feet. So 100 to 120 feet thick and it's uh, harder, more consolidated. So over here, it, it's not as thick, uh, but the sandstone is, is right under it. So you don't have a big separation layer big between the two aquifers. They almost touch. They worked till late last night. We was all out here to dark. It was cold and it was wet. Of course, I have some lights on the shed, so that helped the progress to go even further. So, you know, if you whether you have a homestead and you already have a well, it could be an old well, like there's an old well here, uh, and it's only a shallow well and you wanted to go deeper, this will kind of give you some idea on what the progress is or how it is to dig a deep well. Now, um, 
I was at one time going to dig and put in a shallow well uh, by myself with a place, my other homestead, my other place, and put a, just a little, just a deep enough to get water up for the animals. But the ground is totally different than it is right here. So this is going to be um, hopefully my permanent location as far as living. And I knew by this region here, this area here, that I was going to be running in some rock and uh, closely. And I just didn't really want to go through all that digging and then hit rock and be able to not go anywhere and not get any water. So that was the purpose of getting this gentleman here to come in and drill not only a shallow well, but a deep well for long term and also put on a hand pump so that in case of a hurricane, because I live in a hurricane zone, uh, in case we, you know, just get shut down and we don't have any power, we don't have any power, we don't have any electricity unless you've got solar and uh, hopefully in the future that would be taking place. But the thing of it is, water is life. They say you can only live for three days without water. If you've got animals, water is a must. So, guys, thank you so much. And so let's get rolling with the video. So, guys, we're on day three. The guys are rolling in at this moment. I can hear them. We had, did have some mechanical problems and some geological problems. He lost his drill bit, drill bits, three of them, and the barons all down into the well. So he had to fish those out. And he was successfully with uh, so many hours. I mean, he worked at it, took a fishing line and some magnets, and was able and to flush it out and was to flush out that the where the well is going to be at, flush it out and able to get um, those drill bits out. So that was a success. And they worked till late last night. And uh, so hopefully today we'll have the rest of the well finished. The pump will be on there, the electrical side pump, the hand pump will be on there. And this day will be a total success. This, uh, putting it in this well will be a total success. It will be a deep well with a hand pump. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Please share this video so it'll get out there into the YouTube arena. And uh, yeah, it's been a venture that I believe into these videos. It might be part one, part two, part three. Um, however the video comes out after it's edited, uh, I believe that you will be totally amazed at what it takes to put down a well, to go through the, uh, the ordeal to get water, long-term water for your homestead. that uh, just like I said showing you from where they left off at last night taken and put it in that casing to give it stability when they left last night the purpose of that was to let that all that rock and mud and everything get down in there and to uh, make it more stable to settle 